quickly what did we do yesterday we have done program uh, for accepting marks and calculating average and sum and average sir okay, based on the depending on the program what topic we did class. using class and class. objects class and objects okay yes sir. yes sir okay so we what we did was okay we created total is your um class variable yes, right sir. and um, in it uh, is automatically called correct yes and uh, whenever we create an object in it is called automatically correct then some okay uh, some grade these are our object level function okay yes sir so i was saying that um okay if you see grade okay so grade is object level you can even print let's say uh test dot uh, grade you can see average you can see total you can see right because these are all public data so it is available for us okay um one thing i did was i should have named it differently right so i call it as test 1 test 1 test 1 you know call as test 2 test 2 test 2 okay test 3 test 3 test 3 okay and now you say test 1 dot total so test 1 dot total okay test 2 dot total test 3 dot total and our class name dot total all will give us same value because all total is a class level variable right isn't, isn't it class is numbers so i'm going to say numbers dot total okay so when you run it all of these will give us okay all is giving us 3 right yes, because um, uh, the total is incremented three times we created three object and when you create three object three, three times in it is called correct and we have total getting incremented in, in it right so that's why all of us gave this value and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to delete okay, it's taking time right so i'm going to delete it so that we can focus on our logic okay okay so we haven't seen see we have seen class level variable object level variable object level functions we haven't seen class level function isn't it so class level function i'm going to add one class level function not very generally you know we use but yeah sometimes you can use it generally when you are want to print class level variables right it is better to give class level function as well so class level function there is a special way to do it okay so you have to use a keyword called as class method okay as i said right generally functions inside a um, class is called method okay so you'll hear method method is same as function but it shows that it is part of your class so we have to tell that it is a class method it's a class function class method okay so you put at the rate class method before you define just before you define that function now you define the function the way you would right so def count um uh, student or something like that okay see here when i put bracket open okay when i put bracket open it added cls not self yes sir just because i put class method by charm okay if you are writing in a non ide thing you have to manually add it right that's why ides make things easier better faster okay so it added cls okay to indicate that cls uh, you know to indicate that it's a class level variable okay so sorry function cls 
Of course, if you want to pass something, you can pass any other variable and you can go and you can write things which are common for all the objects. Okay, so you can say total student records available. Available are okay. Uh, count no total right now here. See, so since it is a class level, okay, I have to say CLS dot. Okay, dot, and you see total has come. Earlier when I was doing, it we were not getting. Okay, so the class level, so you have to say CLS dot. And then you get total here, right? So this is how you can define class level method. Okay, it depends upon your logic. If you need a method which has to perform common things for all the Objects. You will put it in the class level method. One thing is you have to define class method before writing the function. Okay. So at the rate class method, and then you define the function. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Now um, So, okay, we'll talk about um, this one, um, public and private thing, right? That we haven't done that. Okay, so let's say grade, I want to make it private. So I will add underscore here. Okay, see, so you can add double underscore here also, I just said, not here, but what is it? The name, right? So you can add double underscore here, here also, but you know, generally here we'll do. Generally inbuilt functions will have underscore here also. Okay, to differentiate between inbuilt and what we have written, okay? So generally we don't give you, so you can, this is good enough, okay? Now when I see, I have given double underscore, right? Now when I run it, you get numbers object has no attribute grade. Numbers object has no attribute grade. Okay, grade is not available. It has become private. You can't you can't print it. Okay, so you know if you do not want because see when you say object name dot, okay. Let me go here and show you. Test two dot. See total is seen. Average sum is seen, method sum is seen, right? Class method count student is seen, but grade is not seen at all, okay? Grade is not seen at all. And when I try to print grade, I will get error because it is private. It is not available for us to use, okay? Now let's try to make this as protected. So protected one underscore, okay? Now when you go and say test two dot, okay? Do you see grade? No, sir. No, right? So protected also cannot be used outside, okay? But if I run it, I'm using grade here, isn't it? So when I run it, it will not give error. Oops, it is giving error. So I think now they have started implementing it, okay? Earlier, okay, the newer version, they would have done it. Earlier, okay, if you make, oh, no, no, no. My mistake. It's still not there. Because name we give underscore, right? You have to use underscore here. Okay? So now when you run it, it will not give error. Okay? It, so it has still not implemented. So. Protected is, I told you, strictly not implemented. You can say underscore, you can still print grade. But double underscore, if you do it, right? I should have done double underscore then also, right? Okay, and I'll make it double underscore. 
when I try to run it, see, it's giving error. It's giving error, right? No attribute underscore, but we have double underscore, right? So double underscore means it's a private and it is not allowed to use outside of class. Same class, not even other class. Okay, public, you can use it anywhere. You can use it the main function in the class, no? Pro uh, protected are supposed to be used only in class and class which inherits, okay? but not supposed to use outside. But Python has not strictly implemented it. Okay, that means even though Python says you should not use it, but we can use it. Okay, so this is called as accessibility. Okay, public, private, and protected. Protected concept is there, but it's not strictly implemented. Make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. Now we'll talk about our first, um, um, what do you call it? Properties. Okay. It's called inheritance. So we discussed inheritance. What does inheritance mean? Inheritance means you have classes, okay, and you have parent class and child class. And child class will inherit properties from parent class. Okay. So we need to define two classes. We need to define two classes, okay? And I can call this as, let's say, I call it as school as your parent class and teacher as a, you know, as a child class. Paint will be better. You can have one child parent class here. Then you can have one child class. So parent, child, you can have one more child. Okay. You can have one more parent. Any kind of relationship is possible. Okay. You can have one more child class. Okay. You can have one more child class here, which has properties from this one, this one. You can have one more class where it can, it can get properties from here, right? All these things are possible. I'll tell you how to link, okay? And second thing, you have to remember, if you have your own property, that means property means your variables and functions. If you have your own property, you will not look for your parent. If you do not have your own, then you will ask your parent. Your parent doesn't have it, then you'll ask your grandparent. Right? So that's the logic. That's all. Okay. So I'm going to um, so okay. Let's take the same example. Right. So you have this uh, student, right? Okay. Let me first make it public. Okay. So let's say this is our class numbers. Okay, now I'll have one more class called, let's say, school. Class school, and here I, um, I'll have one function called dev school name, let's say. Okay, school name, print my international school or something. Okay, now if you see, these two are two different classes. Okay, it's like there is one class here and there is one class here, right? And you can create object of class, uh, sorry, school. So I'm going to say uh, S1 equal to school, right? And I can say s1 dot school name, right? So you get s1. Okay, so I created two different classes, but how do I make it a parent class? Okay, 
So for parent, you don't have to do anything. If you want to make numbers as a child class, you will put a bracket open here, bracket close, and you will define the class, the parent class name. Parent class name, that's all. So if you want to make school as parent class, I'll put like this. So when I say numbers equal to school, that means you are, so this is your number class, and this is your school class. You are saying like this. So this becomes your child class. Number becomes your child class and school becomes parent class. Parent class. If you want to have one more class as parent, so you simply add comma and add one more class here. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, let's say I create another. Okay. Let let it be. Okay. Now, test three is our number class, isn't it? Object or number class. I can say school name. See here, school name is available for test three. That's the beauty. If you make it as a child class, even object will have access to this. You see, it says my international school. Okay. Now, yes. if you do not want it to inherit the content, okay, you can have one more function here in this. this my school name my international school from inner class list okay so when you call it now inner class so if you have your own method you will not ask your parent class but if you do not have your own, that's when you will go and check in parent. If parent doesn't have, then you give error saying that class not found. Okay. Okay. Now let's say student can belong to different classes, right? So I want to give the school name as the variable. Okay. Now here, if you see what I did, I just, I'm printing same name, right? So that means Everybody will have same school name, okay? But instead, what I'll do is, I will create one in it, okay? Where uh, the student, the object, okay, has to give the name. So I'm going to say, comma, name, and I'm going to say here, self.school name equal to name, that's it. And here I'm going to say print my school name is comma self dot self dot school name. Okay. So when I say self dot school name, now okay, forget let's forget numbers for a second. When I create when I say school. Okay, my school name is self name, right? And if I create an object of um, school as well, I have to pass the name, isn't it? Because in it is called automatically, right? So when I, I'll comment it out for now. And if I have to say school name, I have to pass school name, right? ABC International something. So when I run S1 of school name, okay? you get my school name is ABC International. Now, when I say test3.school name, and when I run it, you get my school name from inner class, right? Though no confusion, okay? Object has its own, uh, you know, uh, function. So there is no problem. But now let's say, okay, we do not want, or we want to call parent school name. So I'm going to rename it, okay? Instead of deleting it, I'll just simply rename it. I'll call it school name one. So now when I'm trying to call school name, which function will be called here? Parent. Parent, right? So when I run this, parent is called, okay? But the problem is, 
parent has a variable yeah yes self dot s name so from where do we give the self dot s name okay i'm not calling school object if i'm calling school object then i can pass yeah okay? if i'm calling school i can pass but now what i'm doing is i'm calling numbers object and numbers object doesn't have mechanism to take s name yes s name yes sir correct yes sir now so i have to pass here school name isn't it because when i create object and somehow i need to pass the value isn't it yes or no so i have to say school name correct and okay school name is a mandatory field you cannot put mandatory field at the end so i'm going to put school name here in the beginning okay so now i have to pass school name here right so i'm going to say p q r international school okay i'll have to do it for all the objects okay remember okay oh this is not the object creation right we are creating object here okay uh, everybody clear what i did here so i'm going to call school name function school name function needs school name variable okay so i need to pass i'm pass you can create your own new function okay input school name or you can pass it to the init itself okay so so generally when initialization of values we don't call new function we part it we push it to init itself okay because init is automatically called we you know we, you know sometimes you might forget to pass school name but if you add in init you will not forget you will have to send otherwise your program will not work isn't it so it's always better that you put all the initialization variables all the variables that you need in the init itself okay so i'm adding xyz international school so now international school s name is there okay i can go and say read it okay so i'm going to say self dot s equal to s name okay now what's the problem any problem okay i am calling test 3 okay and test 3 what i am passing xyz international school so when you run it my school name is xyz international school okay no okay sir we'll do one program okay i'm just thinking situation where there will be some common okay so let's say right a parent class or figure i children classes rectangle square circle okay find area and 
perimeter. Okay. Now for rectangle and square, area should be or function should be called from parent class. Okay. For rectangle and square, parent class functions to be called and for circle it should have its own function function functions we can have two different functions no problem okay Let's do this. And then there's one more concept. And with that, we will finish our class. OK? Sounds good. Any question here? Done, everyone? So you will say class figure. Okay. You will have in it, of course. Okay. And you will define the variables here. Read. Read what? You will read. Okay. Side, sir. Correct. Side or radius. You can read both. Yeah, yeah. So yes, you sir. can say A comma B or length comma breadth. Okay. And breadth, you can give zero. Okay. That means, okay. Um, here, if B is zero, it's a circle. Circle. But anyway, you, you will not call the figure. You will call the circle object, isn't it? Yeah. So in it, you will say self dot L, L equal to L self, self dot B equal to B. OK, you'll create to function area, OK? A area equal to, okay. See now, if you are creating area equal to, area is not an object level variable, okay. It's a something different. So I will say self, I'll show you both ways to do it. Into self, self dot L dot B, B, B. B, right? Yes. So this is one way. Second way is, so now if you do it this way, you have to return it. Okay, that's how uh, the you know, function will be able to get it. Okay, or you will say perimeter. Okay, here I'm going to say self dot perimeter. Okay, that's a function, right? self dot peri okay parameter equal to 2 into l plus b right self l plus self dot b okay now i will create class rectangle Okay, now you see. Now rectangle also, see if it's square, you will not call, you will not call two uh, variables, right? Yeah. Okay, so here what you can do is, if, okay, first let me initialize area. Perimeter will work anyways. 
Okay, L plus zero will not have any problem. Okay, then you have to do four times, right? So uh, I have to say area equal to area is this right? So I'll say area equal to maybe minus one first. Then I'll say if self dot b equal to zero. Okay, if self dot b equal to zero, then you will do a r equal to self dot l into self dot l to self dot l square. Okay. Else, you will say area equal to this, and then you will return area. Okay. Okay, yes, yeah, okay. then we go to perimeter. Now perimeter again, we have to use same logic. Okay, here I'm gonna use self. So control C. Okay, I'm going to say PR and PR equal to If it is zero, then it is into four. Correct? Yes, sir. And if it is not zero, then it is into two, two. self dot L plus plus self dot B. Perfect. Now here def in it. Okay, and uh, you have to take two values, isn't it? So uh, for the else, you said AR, shouldn't it be PR? Uh, yes, line number 76. Yeah, line number 76. Okay, then rectangle, I need AB. We need to okay. return it now, sir. No, here my intention was to do self dot so that we don't have to return. Okay. Okay, it is all in the same class. So if you do self dot, it is available. It's object level, right? So it is available for object. You don't have to return it. Okay. Okay. So rectangle in it. Now to to do that, I can even okay. What I can do is I can call the parent class okay now first of all i need to did i put small f or capital f, small f. generally okay. class name you put first capital okay not nothing wrong but yeah then i'm going to say uh, okay and here i'm going to call I'll just call the parent. I can explicitly call parent also. Okay. So I'm going to say parent dot in it. I'll, I'll pass A comma B. But what is A comma B? You can pass simply like that. Or you can read a variable and pass it, right? Now, if you do this, okay. The problem is, okay, still doing ABC calculation. Why? Right. Okay, it is up step. Okay. Now, if I come here, now let me try to create rectangle. Okay. And I have to pass 3, 5. Okay. Int object has no attribute L. Int object has no attribute L. Okay. Okay. So reason being, 
See, A, B, we are passing it here, correct? But how will we pass this variable here? Okay. So, figure sorry, in it, right? You have to. Yes. Now it will be able to read AB. Okay. Now it's able to read AB. It doesn't know that it's same object, right? Now it is able to read AB. Now if you want to print area, we have to call the area function, isn't it? So I'm going to say area equal to r1 dot area. Okay. Now print area is area. Perimeter equal to, okay, directly I can say perimeter. Perimeter is self dot, no, what's self? Here it's object, right? R1 dot. Yes, sir. Rectangle object has no, okay. So this, this is for, perimeter. So we have to call perimeter, no? How will perimeter get called? Okay, now you have it. Right? You have to call the function, right? What is the value we have initialized? So you say r dot perimeter. We don't have to catch the value. If you say return, or you can directly say r dot. So when you call perimeter, r1 is initialized. Right? And from now on, you can simply call r. Now, if I don't pass five, if I just pass three, okay? It is, right? Because here we are expecting two values. Okay, now see, if you want to use single function for both, you can say b equal to zero, correct? If you say b equal to zero, it works fine. But we don't want to use b equal to zero. Is it fine? Three, yes, three, right? It is fine, but we don't want, we want square to use it. So that's why you put B here, okay? So because rectangle, you cannot, you should technically, logically speaking, rectangle, you should, you cannot pass, right? Similarly, now you do square, okay? And you pass only one variable here. Logically, square should accept only one. Rectangle should accept two. And your should accept one only. Right? So, see, you'll be able to do that. Yes? Clear? Yes or no? Uh, sir, can I just uh, understand? So oh, yeah. we defined the rectangle figure uh, on top, right? Why did we not do that with the square figure? We didn't know, yeah. But on top, we, we said figure, right? Uh, rectangle figure on top. Rectangle figure on the top means? We had, we, when we were getting that error, uh, when we were getting the error code, that figure is not defined. We had had to define it on top. Which figure we did not get defined? Like the one in rectangle, the figure. No, no. What we are saying is here we did not give self. That's why we were getting the error. What okay. we have defined everything, right? Everything is defined. 
what is not defined you do not give self here so if you don't give self then it doesn't become part of your object isn't it to indicate that it oh, is right, a part right, of it. Right. right so we give self okay yeah that is the only question so this is your inheritance concept i'm going to paste it this okay so then you can add for circle and square i mean so square we have added but we haven't printed right so let you can print for encapsulation okay what we discuss accessibility is called encapsulation encapsulation means you are hiding the information you want to hide the information that's what encapsulation is inheritance means you don't have to see if the area and perimeter is same for square rectangle and let's say for a or b or c you don't have to repeat it multiple times correct that's the importance of inheritance Okay, you are creating class and objects. The functions or the properties which are common to all the children, you will put it in the parent class. Which is specific, unique about children, you will put it in the uh, child. That's the purpose of inheritance. You are saving the code. Okay, you are not writing it again and again. Single code will work, but it will be seen as rectangle. It will be seen as square. Correct. Okay? So though we had same function for a perimeter, but for calling you use rectangle. And when you pass two variables, it gave you a. When you pass only one variable, it gave you error. Logically, it it this is how it should be. Right. So in encapsulation, we're talking about information hiding. Okay. We want to hide the information. We don't want to display. We want to give only access to only thing which we want to give to the user. so you can create it as a private okay that's encapsulation and um, that is it okay else i'm missing probably no okay so polymorphism is another concept uh, polymorphism means multiple forms right so in this example in the figure and square rectangle it was not polymorphism okay we had only one area only one perimeter function but if you had implemented circle and if you had added the area perimeter in the circle okay it would have become polymorphism same function but you are using it you know for different calculations so how are they same they are same because they are in the you know different i mean same functions but depending upon you are calling you know depending upon which object you are calling a specific function will be called okay so now idea is from now on whatever project or whatever program will do you'll have to use class and object okay okay today is 27th july by 16th or maybe let's say um, by 28th august i want you all of you to do a submit a project will you do it yes sir 